hello. Today is the 21st of May. <sighs> and I have another book haul. Well, it's more, not so much a haul, it's just another two that I'm adding to my collection. Again, in the Vintage Classics series, the ones with the red spines. Um, this first one I'm adding to my collection is called um, Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. Again with the red spine. Uh, hailed as a masterpiece from its first publication, Revolutionary Road is the story of Frank and April Wheeler, a bright young couple who are bored by the banalities of suburban life and long to be extraordinary. With heartbreaking compassion and clarity, Richard Yates shows how Frank and April's decision to change their lives for the better leads to betrayal and tragedy. And of course, there's a couple of um, glowing reviews on the back. So, I have not read this yet, uh, but I, I aim to definitely read it in the near future. The next one here, the second one, is definitely a classic, has been around for many, many decades. Um, I, would, if, I would venture to say even a couple of centuries. It's a... Um, it's one that has been very popular in cultural um, cultural circles and in the mindsets of many, many, many readers. And it has been turned into many movies, movie versions. Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist, which is, as you can see, quite a thick one. And for those of you those few of you who are unfamiliar with the story, Oliver. Oliver is an orphan living on the dangerous London streets with no one but himself to rely on. Fleeing from poverty and hardship, he falls in with a criminal street gang who will not let him go. However hard, time, however hard he tries to escape. In Oliver Twist, Dickens graphically conjures up the capital's underworld full of prostitutes, thieves, and lost and homeless children, and gives a voice to the disadvantaged and abused. It is definitely one of the most popular um, novels to grace the bookshelves. Uh, I am familiar with the story. I've seen multiple movie versions of it, uh, but I as yet have not actually read the novel. I have been meaning to for many, many years, but um, I just have not had the opportunity to do so yet. Oh, please, please excuse my shakiness, it's, it's the camera. Um, so, yes, I've, these are two novels that I've been meaning to read for quite some time, but I only, have only just recently had the opportunity to buy. Um, so, I'm still currently reading uh, we of the Never Never, I'm a bit of a slow reader at the, at the moment. Um, normally I would set my uh, far quicker pace at reading than what I currently am doing, but um, I don't know what's, what's going on, I'm just, I'm taking my, I suppose I'm just taking my time to read and um, enjoy the story really, because what I usually do is I tend to, to go through the, the, the book quite quickly in an effort to, to analyse and review it and then move on to the next one. But, I don't know, recently I've just sort of been taking my time to, to just enjoy the story, really. And, um, especially with, with, um, We of the Never Never. I've been taking my time to enjoy it this time. I'm only about um, halfway through, as you can possibly see, because there's the front of it. No, I'm only about halfway through. So, um, 
but um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying these these vintage classic books. Uh, um, wonderful, wonderful books. I mean, honestly, if you want, um, if you want a story that you know that's you know re it's, it's engaging, um, if you want a story that's um, easy to pick up and, you know, you can pick up where you left off and sort of uh, re immediately immerse yourself in this other world of, like, for example, in Oliver Twist, for example, whenever you pick it up and start reading it from where you are you're immediately transported back to 1840s London in this world of, um, it's a whole other world. You know, the whole other world where, where, where to, a, to a modern mind, such as, modern minds such as ours, in this 21st century, it's something that we are, we as people are no longer familiar with anymore because it's so long ago, the 1840s, that's almost 200 years ago, almost. Two centuries almost. That's a long time. That's a hell of a long time. And in terms of human mortality, two centuries is beyond living memory. There is no one alive today who would remember what the 1840s was, were like. Because Every single person who was alive during the 1840s is now dead and has been dead for a long time. So there is no one alive left today who would remember the 1840s. There's no one alive today who would remember the Crimean War, the Battle of Waterloo, Queen Victoria. And this book was written... Oliver Twist was written at that time, the 1840s. <clears throat> so that was during the reign of Queen Victoria. So, you know... And can you imagine a story that was written, a book that was written during Queen Victoria's early reign, the early parts of her reign, could still be relevant today, could still be read and enjoyed today? almost 200 years later. And you look at even other stuff, like the Bronte sisters, their books are still read and enjoyed. Charles, Charles Dickens, Charles Dickens' other novels, right? Charles Dickens, Shakespeare plays. And he was even a couple of hundred years before that, even. In the, the, the um, 15th, the, the, the 16th and 17th, 16th, 17th centuries. Hmm. 15th, during the reign of Elizabeth I. And that's like four or five hundred years ago. And his plays are still enjoyed and performed today. Romeo and Juliet, Othello, Macbeth, King Lear. Now these are plays, plays that are performed, continue to be performed around the world today. This is what I love about literacy. Lit the literary, the literary world, literature, not just novels, but plays as well. But, you know, I love the world of literature and, you know, and, and for me, I think, uh, being able to, I count, a lot of people in Western developed nations, such as my own home country of Australia, and other nations like the United States, Britain, Canada, New Zealand, these are countries that often take for granted the fact that people, that most people can, pretty much everyone can read and write. You know, maths and literacy and numeracy and these things. You know, because 98, 99% of people have gone to school and have some measure of literacy and numeracy skills and this is what I think really gets me is that there are still people in these countries that are I mean I knew someone 
I knew at least one or two people who were in my life who could not read or write. And they were adults who could not read or write. Adults. How on earth did these... This is what I would often ask myself. How on earth did these people grow up to become adults and still not be able to read or write or do basic maths? How can they not be able to read or write? I mean, this one particular man I knew, I won't tell you his name for his own privacy, but um, this one particular man I knew, he was in his early 50s. In his early 50s, and he still, he could only write just barely enough, read and write just barely enough, to be able to sign his own name. And that was it. He knew what his own name looked like, and he was able to write just enough to be able to sign it, his own name. But that was it. He couldn't read, he couldn't write, and he, he was a single dad. So he, it was just him looking after his three young children, all right? When, we, when, when he, they were younger, because his wife had, apparently she'd um, died giving birth to the youngest one, apparently. And um, so he was a single father and he couldn't read or write. So raising his three children without being able to read or write, I'm amazed how he was able to do it. You know, they'd bring home forms to sign and they'd have to read it him. So when I see, even today, people who can read and write, who don't pick up a book to read for pleasure, why not? Why not? Surely there are those little moments during the day, you're waiting at the bus stop, or you're on your lunch break, you're going for your toity break at work. There's little moments where you have nothing to do. You're not doing anything. Take a book with you. You go to toity, go, go to the toilet, take a book with you. You, you. you go to the bus stop, catch a bus to work or school. Take out your book, take a book with you, read a book. Instead of just staring at the window the whole time, read a book. That's what you need to read a book. Mm. Read a book. Read some. Take, pick a book off the shelf and read the damn thing. Instead of letting it sit there and collect dust. Read a book today and tell your friends about it. And live with passion.